Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. Well, from time to time, I like to do this, and I, I've really been into learning about the American Revolutionary War, the War for Independence lately, so I thought this would be a fun time to do this. Uh, we're going to play the Battle of Brandywine Creek on Empire Total War today. Now, I did this about a year ago when I was first starting to get into this game, and I, I knew very little about the game, and I played on the British side. So I thought I'd revisit it. Now I know my way around a little bit more, and I understand a little bit more about the battle, and this time play as the Americans who historically lost this battle. Uh, before we get into it, just a little bit of a background into uh, the situation in September of 1777. Um, the American Revolutionary War started in April of 1775 with the skirmishes uh, at Lexington and Concord in Massachusetts outside of Boston. I won't get into all the details of that, but basically that was where it started. Eventually after that, so many American militia forces converged on Boston that uh, for the better part of the rest of that year, Boston was a city under siege with an American army surrounding it and the British held up there in Boston. Well, eventually Washington uh, gets a bunch of artillery from uh, Henry Knox who goes over to Fort Ticonderoga and brings it across the mountains. Uh, the, the British are forced to flee the city of Boston. They load up onto the ships and they leave. Uh, they end up in 1776, in the summer of 1776, taking uh, the city of New York. A disastrous campaign for George Washington uh, on Long Island and then eventually on Manhattan and they get driven out of the city of New York. Well now fast forward to 1777 and the British load up all their uh, forces, about 20,000 men on transport ships and they take them down uh, to the Chesapeake Bay and they come up Chesapeake Bay and they land in Maryland. The idea being they're going to take Philadelphia. So Washington knows this and he has plenty of time to prepare a defense. And he decides to prepare his defense along Brandywine Creek in September. He's got a couple of days advance notice. He's able to completely choose his own battlefield. And he chooses to build his force along Brandywine, Brandywine Creek uh, outside of Philadelphia. Uh, the idea being that he can force the British to attack him on his terms. So he covers what he thinks are all of the potential crossings for the British. Thinking he can force them into an attack. Uh, at this one particular place called Chad's Ford. But he doesn't scout things properly, and that was the major reason why they lost this battle. There was an unknown crossing about five miles away from Washington's main line, and that was where uh, General Howe sends Cornwallis with a flanking attack, I think of something like 9,000 men. And they completely take the Americans by surprise, turn their flank. Uh, it's a disaster. Lafayette is wounded in this battle. And the end result of this is that two weeks later, the British take the city of Philadelphia. It was the largest battle of the American Revolution in terms of the number of troops on the battlefield, about 30,000 men total when you count both sides. Uh, disaster for the Americans, they, heavy casualties. They lost about 10% of their army. Uh, so I don't know exactly what's going to happen here. I'm assuming this is probably Chad's Ford. This is the place we're expecting them to cross. And historically, then, it would be Washington's right flank that got turned up this way. But I'm not so sure that's going to happen. I'm just going to operate under the assumption that the British are going to cross here. So I've got here um, the long riflemen. This is something the Americans have that the British didn't have quite as much of. Rifles were um, a luxury in the American Revolution. They were... Uh, if you're not familiar with weaponry, basically, um, I guess I just can't move them that easily. Um, rifled guns were much more accurate and could fire from a distance. These muskets that the uh, most soldiers had really were com pretty much ineffective from anything outside of about 50 yards. Um, let me see. I don't know if this is a good place for these guns or not. I think we probably need to get up to some higher ground. I don't think they can cross there. All right, I think we're just going to go ahead and get started here because it's paused. I didn't get... Uh, you don't get the option of choosing your deployment in this one. They just deploy wherever they deploy, so... Um, we've got some light infantry here. I actually think I'm going to put them off to the sides. We're going to put... This is line infantry here.
All right, we gotta get these guns back somewhere where they can be more effective. I wanna try and make this crossing as miserable for him as possible. All right, we're gonna tell these three units behind to not fire at will. And we're gonna have them as a backup. Like our light infantry might be able to come forward here and deploy some stakes. Which, if he leads with his dragoons or his cavalry, that might come in handy. Where's he gonna come? Artillery! I think this will probably work. Okay. On Alright. Let's go back to these two units of uh, riflemen here. Make sure that they're covering any other potential crossing that might be out here. All right, our guns are firing already. Looks like we're firing at his artillery. So he's going to basically mass everybody and come at me across here. Looks like he's sending his whole force at once, and I'm not sure how easily I can hold against all that. fire just yet. Let's get these guys to deploy stakes as well, just in case. Now, I don't know if I make these guys move now. How that works. Light infantry behavior, I guess, means spread out. All right, here they come. And he is coming. He is leading with his cavalry, so that's perfect. Light dragoons. We took out seven in that first volley. He's not even going to make it this far. That's Order. awesome. He's just trying to scout out. He wants to see my position. Get that. Oh, I got troops back here. Oh, man. How did I miss all that? That's a problem if I don't get them up there in a hurry. Those are Minutemen. Run! Okay, here he comes. Oh, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> Nice. Lost four men. All right, now though, we need to be careful. Okay, light infantry is gonna back off. We're gonna pull them back. Let these guys have their turn. Here comes light infantry coming across Brandywine Creek. Reload, boys, reload. Oh yeah, you're not gonna get me by sending across one unit at a time, stupid AI. I just gotta be careful he doesn't cross somewhere else and do to me what the British historically did, which it looks like he may try to do. I don't know where else he can cross here. Yes! Oh, <laughs> wiped out both of his guns. Nice. All right, here comes his main body. All 
right, I'm gonna pull the light infantry back. So we can let our main line fire. He's gonna have, uh, looks like uh, grenadiers. He's gonna have Hessians in this force. Yeah. This is where it's gonna get tricky. But I've got multiple lines. Look at this, he's just sending huge numbers across at one time. Alright, we gotta make sure the Minutemen aren't firing. Oh, he loses General? Oh, William Howe has been killed. Silly dude. What were you thinking? Here they come. Oh man, that's a lot of Redcoats. They're definitely gonna break my first line. the melee attack here. Try to hit these guys. Yes, we'll let these guys hold in the first line as best they can, and then we'll open up with a volley on the second line once they retire. pretty good I'm impressed good for them defend Philadelphia still got about half my force at least on that line oh here come the Hessians all right our first units falling back Or is he, are these just the Hessians actually broke through? They did. Okay. Where's my cavalry? Here they are. Well, what are we waiting on, boys? Let's get in the action. Guys, fire. These are dragoons, so they're not really equipped for melee combat. They're more of a uh, mounted infantry to fire. So they're reloading right now. They're going to fire right into the backs of these British soldiers. Here it comes. This is all just a big melee mess. What's he got back here? I think it's probably just artillery, but it looks like he may be trying a flanking attack. Now it's just a unit that's fleeing. Okay. I guess, you know what we should do at this point is send our riflemen around. See if they can cross anywhere over here. He's probably got guns back there somewhere. Oh yeah, we got this. See, he committed his whole force to the one spot instead of trying to flank attack. Yes. 
Now our dragoons ride in. They're gonna hit these Hessians. Oh wow, that was uh, relatively easy. A close victory. All right, so it looks like uh, I lost 223 men, he lost 539. Obviously the AI is not known for its great skill, especially when he loses his general like that early on. But mostly that was just a, uh, a way of kind of introducing the idea of playing some historical battles. So we'll do some uh, in different battles. We'll fight some Confederate and Union battles, uh, American Civil War on uh, Napoleon. We'll do some of the Napoleonic battles. So if there's a particular uh, historic battle on any of the uh, Total War series games that you'd like to see, let me know. And uh, I'll try to uh, cede to those requests as best I can. And in the process, talk a little bit about the historic battle uh, that I'm playing. So it's a great way to kind of talk a little history, but also uh, have some fun in the process. So uh, use the comment section below if there's a particular battle that you want to see fought and hear talked about. And uh, I'll do the best to do that. So if you hit that thumbs up, that'll let me know you want to see more uh, things like this, more historic battles. And uh, use the, the comments uh, as much as you can. And hit, thanks a lot. We'll see you again real soon.